Hey, good evening to you, Mark Seventh Hurricane Track dot com. I am in Ponce in Puerto Rico, working with fellow patron. Um, well, I guess that would mean that I'm a patron too. But uh, one of our patrons, I'm the creator. He is the patron. He is the supporting uh, entity here. He, Brent Lynn, helping me out. Um, and uh, he flew over from St. John yesterday. He and I are down in Puerto Rico. We're going to tackle whatever Dorian tosses our way. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Uh, I'll come back on at the end. I've been having some weird things happening with this annotation software on this particular laptop. So I'm going to appear now. I'm going to disappear. And then let's get on with uh, the presentation, shall we? In the Atlantic. Of course, we have TD number six here in the uh, western Atlantic between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras. I think this is going to be upgraded to Tropical Storm Aaron. By the time you see this video, it should be Aaron. Uh, this is going to go on up eventually here and impact uh, Atlantic Canada as eh, kind of like your hybrid spread out type storm. Tropical characteristics mixed with some extra tropical mid-latitude storm features up here. The bottom line is there will be an increase in rip currents, some swells, rough seas, etc. for this area along the east coast. Uh, of the United States and on into Atlantic Canada. So you folks that like surfing, be careful out there. And if you're at the beach having a good time this Labor Day weekend coming up uh, as this moves on up, it's a few days away, but you know this is still going to leave some energy in the ocean. And then we have Dorian coming, possibly. So you got to be real careful out there on the beaches. Those wave, the, the the wave energy that comes in from those waves is a big deal, and it can kill you especially little kids and people that are not good at swimming. So please take that extremely seriously. Here we have Dorian down in the deep tropics here. Um, and we'll talk about this more in detail. Uh, this is from the 8 o'clock intermediate advisory. I'm sure you know what the track forecast looks like by now. We look at the watches and warnings and the track here. You know, Passing generally over Puerto Rico, avoiding the island of Hispaniola, and supposedly here turning the corner and making its way into the southwest Atlantic, what looked like uh, a system that was going to come into the Caribbean, into this gauntlet that exists in here, and just die, now could be, put a huge question mark in here, a formidable threat to some place along the southeast coast. Could be. Still a lot of uncertainty, but with each passing hour, yeah, maybe each passing six hours, um, things start to look a little bit clearer that this could pose a substantial impact for some place along the southeast coast. Uh, real quick, this is what should be Aaron at the 11 o'clock Eastern Time Advisory, packaged from the Hurricane Center. General westerly flow coming through here, the trough, big low pressure area there, another big trough digging down, all that energy coming, sweeping along will scoop up what would be Aaron and move it on up into Atlantic Canada. Now, we do have Dorian sitting over here. Notice, too, though, eastern Atlantic still nice and void of any deep convection at all. But I think that's going to change over the next few days, maybe more than a few days, certainly the next couple of weeks as we get into September. Um, had a little chat back and forth with Ben Knoll from Ben Knoll Weather down in New Zealand. And he's indicating that the modeling suggesting that the sinking branch, uh, the part of the walker circulation, and this upward motion, downward motion, suppression pattern, where the Atlantic has generally been suppressed for convective activity and sinking air leads to dry air also, that that is going to abate in a pretty big way. It's going to reverse itself, it does look like. But we'll deal with that when the time comes. Just letting you know. That, you know, we got Dorian here, Aaron to be, it looks like here, D E. Yeah, we still have F G H I J K, probably L M and N to go. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. And I think we're going to see some energy come off of Africa over the coming days to week or so. Um, that could develop. So right now, though, we will certainly focus on Dorian. Um, look at the wide shot here. Obviously, we have the whole Atlantic Basin, the North Atlantic Basin covered here. This is very healthy outflow. I mean, wow. 
even over here on the eastern side, it's a little choked, you know, a little smushed, but that nice curved clockwise outflow channel almost that, I mean, that's really classic. The inhibiting factor seems to be this dry air that's in the mid levels of the atmosphere. And it, when the thunderstorms try to go up that upward motion, they pull in more dry air that's around Dorian. You remember, this is a, a low pressure area sitting here. It's not very intense right now, but it is a low pressure area and wind is rushing, air is rushing towards it from all directions, basically, and then rising when you see this convective activity, and that pulls in this drier air. And that just, it's like taking a hair dryer to a steamed up mirror, sort of, uh, if you can envision that. So the, the thing is, when will that stop? presumably after the encounter here with Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, Vieques and Calabria, the, the islands up here of the Northeast Caribbean. Somewhere in the Southwest Atlantic, this system could really intensify, and we have to watch that closely. All right, backing up a little bit, track guidance here for what is soon to be Aaron. Do not worry about these models over here. That's just forget it. Focus instead on this tightly clustered track suite uh, package, whatever you want to call it. Generally speaking, nice agreement into Atlantic Canada. Close enough, though, as this goes by, pretty large system. Send out some swells, maybe some peripheral showers and some gusty winds. Remember, we do have the perigean spring tide come up. The, the high tide, the higher astronomical tides of the month. And that's going to affect areas like the Bay of Fundy to an extent, uh, right up here, of course, right there. Um, you know, the Gulf of Maine, Cape Cod down to Cape Hatteras, all the way down to Charleston Harbor. Uh, whether or not we're talking about soon to be Aaron here or Dorian, high tides, the monthly high tides are coming. All right, zooming in on Dorian now, this nice loop here, the floater loop from Levi and his site, tropicaltidbits.com. I am, like I said, in Ponce here uh, in Puerto Rico, roughly right there. And look at that. Just, I mean, meteorologically speaking, this is a beautiful sight. And, you know, you can say that. You can recognize that something is extraordinary to the eye, even though it has harmful consequences. It doesn't mean that it's a positive thing. All right? And so this is a true amazing work of nature, that outflow very well established. But... There's just not much banding going on, at least on the infrared. Um, dry air gets entrained, etc. But it definitely has one good thing going for it, and that's the exhaust here in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Notice what we don't see. Let me use uh, violet. We don't see upper level winds cutting across it like this, blowing all the clouds off in one direction. Or, you know, everything is screaming off this way, and you see some little low-level swirl left behind, you know, where the thunderstorms are outrunning the low-level center. That's not happening. It's mostly a dry air and what we call thermodynamics issue, which is great because it's keeping it at bay. I mean, it was bad enough down here in Martinique. You know, if you saw some of the video from there, uh, and other areas where this plowed through this morning, flooding rain was excessive, and it caused a lot of problems. Uh, from a wind and pressure perspective, so far, Dorian is not a major problem. Where is the center on this particular satellite loop? I don't know for sure. <laughs> um, hard to say because it is, you know, it's probably sitting in here somewhere, I would guess, but who knows? Recon will tell us about that. That's not as important right this moment since it's generally disorganized and you do have these large blobs. Let's see what happens, sort of marks keys to the game again. Over the next 6 to 12 hours, do we see more of a curved banding structure set up again uh, and a more classic look rather than this sort of disheveled, I just got out of bed look, <laughs> Um, or what, right? That's going to be a big key to its health. Uh, do the pressures continue to fall? I've noticed on some recon data as of late, 
that the pressures were falling do the winds start to come up. Then, as time progresses, we will be able to watch as this approaches the islands over here, including the bigger island of Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Calabra, Vieques, uh, depending on the trajectory, the heading of this system, its bearing, you know, does it come right across Puerto Rico like that, the center? Well, if so, you got all these clouds coming with it, and that's going to encompass this whole area in periods of heavy rainfall, gusty winds to tropical storm force. Probably not much stronger than that. The guidance is not extremely excited about this intensifying quickly. But as I'll show you towards the end, we do have impacts that we need to talk about here. All right, the track. Boy, today, on Twitter especially, I saw quite a lot of people um, really upset with each other. It seemed like going back and forth about the models and the health of the city. It was just nuts. You can see people's frustration kind of showing through that we don't have a good handle on what's happening with Dorian. If something bad is going to happen, you want to know about it in advance. I think we can all agree to that. Even if it's unpleasant, which something bad is usually unpleasant, right? Of course. Um, you don't want to say something bad might happen. I know we get that all the time with our health. I know I ignored that for many years until last December when I had some big health issues that I have since corrected. But we do. We ignore these things. Well, you know... You got high blood pressure, you should take care of it, or it could lead to X, Y, and Z. I didn't, and it came back to bite me, but I didn't like hearing about that. If the doctor said it absolutely will, on you know December 20th, cause you to have an aortic dissection, and he could tell me that for sure, which is exactly what happened to me, I probably would have said years ago, oh, well, then by all means, let me lose a bunch of weight, and probably have to take blood pressure medication. It's, it's relevant because that's what we do with the weather. If it's going to rain, like the, you hear these probabilities, 80, 90, 100%, whatever, especially when you look outside and it is raining, you take your umbrella. But if you're like, hey, honey, is it going to rain today? And I don't know. It's only a 30% chance. Ugh. Or a 50% chance. Well, that's almost harder because now it's like a flip of a coin. If a hurricane is coming your way, you want to be able to rely on the forecast so you can be ready for it. And so it's frustrating that we don't know for sure. I get that. And you would think that all the way over here in 2019, things would be getting better. But they're only getting better slowly. Track forecasting is always evolving. It's getting better. But intensity forecasting is still where there is so much room for improvement. So please keep that in mind. I know we want simple answers, but... We don't have them yet. So we look at the guidance here, and you look at the overall pattern. Look at what's not happening. It, it did not come across and go across Hispaniola. That is not going to happen. I'm 100% certain of it at this point. Okay, so we know that. Um, generally speaking, it looks like it's going to cut across or very close to Puerto Rico and the surrounding smaller islands. Very high probability of that. The guidance envelope here is pretty tight for the next 48 hours or so into the southwest Atlantic. It looks like it will avoid direct uh, impacts to the Bahamas, most of them anyway. That's good news. Then you have this bend back to the west. So instead of just coming up and going on out to sea, it bends back to the west. Why does it do that? Let's address that real quick. All right, let's get rid of you. Thank you very much. The reason that it's going to bend back, uh, coming up like this, and it looks like it could try to go out to sea and then generally heading in this direction. And let me draw over the top of that with yellow just to kind of highlight this. And this is just approximate. Why is it, generally speaking, going to do that? Because all of this upper level low pressure energy that's up here, including some energy here with soon to be Aaron, and this low pressure area here, those are all low pressures in the atmosphere with high pressure sandwiched in between. Bottom line, it's enough uh, weakness up here to allow Dorian to gain some latitude. Then what happens, this stuff leaves, this trough digs in, lifts out, 
and what's in its place is a fairly strong ridge of high pressure, roughly, that's, yeah, I'm just approximating here, that blocks Dorian from just going on up and out to sea. That looks like the scenario that is setting up. A deep layer Western Atlantic ridge of high pressure would be setting up, allowing this to gain latitude now, but then it gets blocked and should start to turn back towards the Florida Peninsula or the Southeast United States somewhere. And, you know, Florida's part of the Southeast. We're just five days away, maybe six. And it could change. That high pressure could build up here and then kind of relax a little bit so you get this turn and then maybe a turn back towards the north. So from Miami, the Keys, all the way up to Cape Hatteras, you better be watching this thing. That's not the same as panic, get upset, worry. You know, I know hurricanes are very uh, un unpleasant. As passionate as I am about studying their impacts, I get excited about that opportunity. I'm not excited about what they do to people. I hear from these people every day in social media that have been through hurricanes, some of them very recent, and I know. I know how it is. Uh, and I went through Florence last year and others in my lifetime, so I am with you. So don't panic. Don't worry about it. Don't fret. You know, don't look at some schmo's weather page that just keeps posting model plot after model plot after model plot that says, don't look at this model. I mean, I don't know what, I can't come up with a tasteful <laughs> analogy for that. That's like somebody coming in and saying, I'm going to drop my drawers, don't look at me. I mean, come on, laugh with me because that's funny. That's You'd be like, what? That's ridiculous. Nobody would ever do that. Well, probably somebody would, but you get my point here. This posting of stuff saying, don't look at this. Don't look at that. Don't go. Don't go looking at the so and so model run. It's just, you know, come on, man. That's like telling a kid, don't go getting those freshly baked cookies or whatever, right? Don't go playing with that fire that I just lit. If you have kids, you know what I'm talking about there. Um, I hate that. It's so frustrating because people have enough to worry about while they're having to see stuff that's not in context. So, you know, over the next few days, this will evolve. So let's get it past Puerto Rico and vicinity first, and then we can see what happens after that. Because it's days away. You are aware of it. We will deal with it in due time as we need to. So this is the various models. Some of these, by the way, are your consensus models, the different uh, dynamical models that are hurricane-specific, uh, different averages. That's the AAEMI. That's like the... Uh, GFS Ensemble Mean. Some of these are your simpler, um, uh, what do you, oh, I can't remember. I remember the BAMs, Beta and Advection Model. These are more of your simple numeric models. You know, these are just pieces of guidance. That's it. Okay? Now, I want to show you the GFS Ensembles. The GFS has an operational run and then 19 or 20, whatever it is, members. Remember, I've said this before, the, uh, the operational is very similar to the conductor. The rest of the orchestra makes up the ensemble. That's a good way to look at it. So here you have different models individually. Here you have one model and its ensemble members. Look at the shape. I like what I see in terms of consistency, that we're not seeing craziness all over the place, you know, like that. It's just like, wah! It's generally showing this curve back towards Florida. Now that's not good news in and of itself, but what else does it show? It shows you my point that it goes around this area of developing high pressure sitting out here. That's And that's just a, a very generalized way of looking at it. Comes up because there's a weakness now that fills in, bends back to the west, and goes back around the periphery of the high. Generally speaking, it rounds the edge of the high pressure area. Back to this graphic, hopefully. What you need to be wary of are the questions of does this come up and turn more abrupt and get into the gulf over here, whatever, or does it turn, the high pressure weakens again and it comes up the coast, 
These are questions you should be asking yourself because it's hurricane season and you should be ready, but not worried about. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a, I, I do live in Mobile, Alabama or New Orleans. I, I, I should be watching this and I should already have all my stuff ready to go. Whatever, you get my point here? There are some scenarios, depending on strengths and weaknesses of all sorts of weather features, where this could cut across the peninsula or it could come up and threaten the Carolinas proper. And I'm just telling you the facts. That's true. That's a true statement. What happens, I don't know. And that's also a true statement. The shape of the ensemble members here is very telling, though. That general curve around a high-pressure area, a typical-looking hurricane track. If you think about the history of hurricanes, they look like that a lot of times. Um, as far as intensity for Dorian, slow, but generally speaking, the envelope of the intensity guidance is up into Category 1, a majority of those models into Category 1, Category 2, and then eventually it goes down again because some of these models, I guess, indicating a landfall at about 108 hours or so. just depends. So we'll see. A lot of this is going to be determined by how quickly and efficiently Dorian develops an inner core, dry air getting mixed out, and whatever. We can worry about the wind. That's what these categories are for. That's the Saffir Simpson scale. This tells us nothing about rain or storm surge necessarily, kind of related to storm surge, but this tells us nothing about 30 inches of rain that could fall if this stalls over an area or whatever. Cat, uh, cats, categories and cats are um, wind, all right? Wind, the Saffir Simpson, it's a wind scale. Pressure is somewhat related as well, but this is what that shows, and this will change. Okay, another look at the models to give you an idea of a global model, a sophisticated global model with lots of money and talent put into its development. This is the ECMWF from this morning, the morning run, 12Z. The major runs are 0Z and 12Z. Here's Dorian, right down here. Uh, the high pressure area, not quite strong enough to keep Dorian, like if this was all the way over here, Dorian would have gone more west and would be dying right now in the Eastern Caribbean. But you got this big chisel knocking away at the high pressure area. There's also a little upper level low sitting in there. And there you go, that's the major player. So if we put the Euro into motion, you've seen this, I'm sure. There's that curve, and that does go from roughly Melbourne exiting south of Cedar Key, and then eventually somewhere near Pensacola. That's the run today, but that look at that. That's six days, seven days out, a week away. If you're in Pensacola, don't worry and be like, oh, my gosh. You know, and over here, you're like, oh, Michael, last year, it's just terrible. Yeah, it's anxiety. I get it. You know, but you have access to this. You're going to see it somewhere. Just realize this is far out in time. And, you know, even day five, it could be in Melbourne. It could be in Charleston. It could be in Miami or whatever, south of Miami there. Honestly, five days out and beyond, a lot, tremendous, hundreds of miles can change in terms of the track. And forget intensity at that time. Are you kidding me? No way to even know. So that's the uh, Euro at day five. Hey, there's a cricket. That cricket was in here earlier. Um, what is the GFS show from 12Z today uh, at day five? Roughly the same thing. Now, that's important to me because that's fairly good consistency. All right? So out to day five from earlier today, they were fairly consistent with each other. Now, you can go and look at well, what's the legacy GFS show? What does this model show? You can do that all you want. I look at them and I go, okay, cool, that's it. And let's try to compare things. But please, let me just remind you once again, don't get too wrapped up in what all these different models say. Just kind of go with the flow and be sensible, right? Don't lose sleep over it just yet. We still have to deal with down here, Puerto Rico, and the other islands of the Northeast Caribbean. And as such, I want to touch upon the impacts that they are thinking for this area. 
uh, weather forecast office, the WFO out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. I am in Puerto Rico, so this matters to me. Timing of impact starting early Wednesday morning through Thursday afternoon. The heaviest rain, strongest winds Wednesday afternoon through Thursday morning. I'm supposed to fly home Thursday morning, so that could be interesting. <sighs> Rainfall accumulation totals. This is very important. The wind does not tell us about the rain. Dorian could be a tropical depression and dump a lot of rain. All right? Eight inches of rain over some of these mountains around here, rushing down the streams, etc., could cause problems. Maybe hurricane force winds. You see that notated here. Possible. Strong gusty winds, tropical storm force winds, etc. 18 foot seas. Yeah, that's a big deal. Up to 23 feet, mainly across the Caribbean waters and the Mona Passage. All right. Yeah, one to two feet of surge, possibly. Maybe 10 to 20 feet of breaking waves. And the Hilton that I'm staying at is right on the ocean, facing south. So that could be interesting. Please note what these impacts are. And remember, this is for a tropical storm. Uh, we're under a tropical storm warning here in Puerto Rico and a hurricane watch, meaning that hurricane conditions are possible. Um, real quick, I want to talk about, as I wrap up, Patreon, several people joining this lately, crowdfunding, but it's more than just, please give me money so that I can do what I do. I hate talking about money, but if I don't, nobody else, I mean, how are you going to know? So uh, I like it because of these posts that I can do. A lot of them I post publicly. And if it says that it's private, you know, it says unlock now. If it's public, like here's who I had dinner with tonight, Carlos and Brent. Uh, Carlos lives in San Juan. He is also a patron. Brent on the right there, he lives over in St. John, also a patron. Brent is the guy helping me out. Uh, we had dinner together tonight, talked things over. A lot of these are public, as you can see, and I can post very similarly to Patreon like I can with Twitter, but it's all right here. And for our members, our patrons, whether it's a dollar a month or more, and these different tiers that you see on the right tell you what you get, it's really amazing. So, you know, it's a great way to say, all right, what's happening? Most of what I do is public, but the stuff that's exclusive, I really do work hard to put it out there and give people who are supporting my work something for their hard-earned money because, hey, it's money that makes the world go round. We can't escape that fact. I haven't won the Powerball yet. I don't try that hard, honestly, but this is certainly helping, and I thank you all for being a part of it. I'll put the link to my Patreon uh, in the description. <sighs> all right, I'm going to try to get some sleep. Uh, and in the morning, I'll be setting up some equipment. I'll be working with the Weather Channel. Uh, I love doing that. They're a, a great and very professional group of people. Uh, my cameras will be available on the Weather Channel. We brought two with us. We have one in St. John at Brent's house as well. So you might see those on the Weather Channel. We'll be posting some of those to our patrons. That will also go into our app, uh, Hurricane Impact, which is having some issues. Hopefully the video stuff will work something I have to address later. It's always something, isn't it? Um, but we'll be working hard down here, and I'll be posting stuff on social media as well. So in the morning, I'm going to set up a camera, and then I'm going to do a video discussion on the, uh, with the latest on Dorian and what is now probably Tropical Storm Aaron. Long discussion tonight, but there's a lot to talk about, and we have a long way to go, not only with these events, but the hurricane season. Thanks for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to be back on the screen to sign off. I forgot. Hi. Um, it was locking up earlier like I would... I, I did a take and it's, it's just froze on me, whatever. I'm tired. i got to go to bed. Uh, it's great hanging out with you guys. I appreciate you tuning in from your side of the screen over there. It's always a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Hopefully you learned something uh, along the way. You stay aware and I answered some questions. Do hit me up on um, YouTube in the comments. I try to answer what I can. If not, directly than at least through uh, the discussion next time and of course on patreon as well um I, I love the interaction it's fantastic have a great rest of your evening i am mark Sutta for hurricanetrack.com from ponce in puerto rico i'll have more for you tomorrow